decided to go back to uh, to my little website here and come up with a, a different plan um, that involved six blocks in a circle rather than what we were doing which was 12 uh, I think well it's going to cut down the basically cut down the work and uh, also give us it gives us more wood waste um, but also a bit more room to manoeuvre found some more oak plank um, in in the garage left over from um, flooring the lounge which is really rather nice wood actually cut it into planks the uh, prescribed size and uh, I set the, the saw up so that we've got a stopper here that will give us the length that we're after so hopefully I can't screw up oh there you go our quest for sawdust and firewood continues So we'll stop after six and see what we get. I've done four, so let's do another two. I'm uh, trying to chop these bits of uh, the nail holes out. So that's six. Let's just see what that looks like. Uh, the other thing I decided to do was buy a biscuit cutter. Um, which I'll show you when I get it, because it's on order, hasn't turned up yet. Um, two. Um, it's still not quite perfect, but let's see if we can squidge that in. That will uh, allow me to, to sort out the joints a bit better. Right, so that's what we've got with six. It's still not absolutely brilliant, but I suppose if we put it in the strap and squidge it together it's, it's not far away and if I take my my ten plate about this is what we're actually after so looks like we're gonna get what we want out of that so proof of implementation there's a lot more waste there's a lot less work so uh, you know I figure I'll go with the waste because being lazy okay well that that seems to be doable doesn't it I a little adjustment to the uh, the cutter here because the things I was cutting seemed to be as I was cutting them they were changing size and they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and nothing was exact at all so I've made this little jig to go on the side here and uh, yeah so far it's, it's been working okay um, yeah got the table out and cut a few more planks up uh, and there's my pile so we've got a few more to do and then we got enough for 10 10 portholes so yeah not too bad really hopefully we can sort this out this cutter has arrived. Uh, it's a Eboya one or whatever it is, cheap one from Screwfix anyway. Plus some biscuits that, we, uh, that I think we'll, we'll do. So I uh, made this little jig to just fit into the corners to mark the middle where we've got to cut the biscuits from. 
Uh, I've also trimmed up one of these blocks so that it all fits together snug so uh, quite pleased with that that's working okay and uh, yeah so now let's, uh, let's mark off the middle and cut the biscuits out okay so we mark these up so now set up to be uh, well there's a there's a depth gauge up the side so you just set where you want your, your biscuit to be in this case I want it to be like dead in the middle of this block so uh, anyway we set that up had a test run at it it seemed to be okay so now it's um yeah come out <laughs> the biscuit and uh, yeah you can glue that together and make a nice strong joint so there you go that's what we're doing at the moment these things are supposed to swell up and you put them in the in the in the glue you use and I'm going to use epoxy um, yeah once you um, paint them up they're supposed to swell and fill the joint so though they seem pretty loose at the moment they're supposed to uh, yeah become tight Okay, so we'll cut this one up. Uh, now I'm just going to dry fit it all to make sure everything works. Uh, these are um, type 0 biscuits, they seem to come in three sizes 0, 10, and 20. Uh, so I'll pick the 0 because uh, even though it's uh, they're supposed to be um, for slightly thinner wood. Um, I didn't want the biscuits to go over the edge of the circle, as in the 20mm the circle I'm going to end up with. So uh, that's why I've picked the smallest. But we'll see if that works out, of course. Okay, right. So we're all ready to uh, to mix up some epoxy now and try and get these these, these things uh, glued up. So uh, yeah, here goes. Uh, I'll uh, pop that up there. Okay. <coughs> you mix this up five to one. So five of the uh, whatever it is, the glue, the resin, and one of the hard. So can you get the weighing machine. Do this by weight. So if we start with 50 and see how much that looks like, it's going to be a lot, I think. Uh, maybe not too much. That's 30, 41. Disaster! I will uh, I warn you now. I've never done this before. As you know, so I'm going to line these dudes up. Spot some epoxy on. 
Yeah, I don't know whether I told you before, but uh, I don't know if you uh, went to my school, you'll uh, remember a teacher, a woodwork teacher called Nogger Knight, uh, who was renowned for uh, use of extreme violence and throwing lumps of wood at pupils and stuff like that. But he was an ex military man and marched everywhere, literally marched like he was on parade ground outside Buckingham Palace. But uh, yeah, I can't help thinking, every time I do something woodworky, I always think of him. So he must have done something right, I guess. I don't know. But we'll see, he's probably rolling in his grave thinking, my, my God, is this the best he can do after all my trials and tribulations? But yeah, apparently he uh, served in uh, Alamein and he was, he was deaf from all the gunfire. He was in the Royal Artillery, so yeah, he was an old school teacher. I didn't care what you thought, or well, I don't know, these days I don't think it, it'd last as a teacher, you couldn't just uh, hit people with lumps of wood and stuff and get away with it anymore, I don't know. But I do know when he uh, retired, uh, his, his retirement speech in front of the school was uh, something along the lines of, uh, I don't, um, probably when I've hit you with a lump of wood, it, um, it probably hasn't hurt you that much done you no harm but it's made me feel a hell of a lot better so there you go he's a great guy really and uh, yeah he got a standing ovation from a bunch of kids who were absolutely determined not to be impressed by anybody so there you go so this one's for you Nog if it works there you go I'm sure if you went to, to my school you'll remember that Okay, back in the shed, um, trying to get these uh, porthole covers routed out. So, after much trial and error, the majority being error, um, come up with this, uh, or I've come up with this table or my bed. So, that's the centre, the circle. That's where the two routing marks are for inner and outer. I don't know if you can see that. So the name of the game is to line up the blanks, which are here. With the inner and outers, lock them onto the, lock them onto the table and use this gizmo. So that screws into the center and it's got the two holes for inner and outer so hopefully that will remain stable so uh, yeah so lock it in do the outer lock the outside do the inner that's the the gist of it but uh, yeah I'll show you um, well show you one as we do one hopefully if I don't cock it up again all right okay so first things first you've got the, the blank and you put it 
onto the table such that uh, you can see the the cut is going to trim all around and not miss anywhere. So once you're pretty happy that you've got it sorted, you kind of lock it to the table. So I've got these things which I can just screw in here. In the tripod. So once you're happy you're in position, <coughs> then um, lock it in. Locks it to the table and put another cup on. Right, so that's pretty much locked in place. Stage two actually, what I do first is to uh, sand it down. Right, the reason behind that is because uh, you kind of want it flat, flattish, because otherwise it will keep sticking when you keep uh, pulling the router around. Okay, so we're on outer. So, screw the router in. Okay, so now. Notice my fabulous inner and outer system, so even I can't screw it up. Right, and uh, yeah, then what we do is we um, start to go round, round and round and round and round, going lower and lower and lower. So, As you can see, we're slowly getting through it. A bit of sanding. Uh, right, so once we've got through the outer, then we can put the outer clamps on. Right, outer rings now cut, so uh, next stage is to lock it in place. So that's now locked. So I'll take the leave us free to cut the uh, inner one. So Put it in the inner hole. Screw it back in. And we should be ready to go on the, uh, the inner.
yeah, I must admit that um, this is um, a bit Heath Robinson. I understand that, uh, yeah, there'll be people laughing at this, but this is all I've got to work with, so um, yeah, not got a proper bench or anything, so uh, this, is, <laughs> this is as good as it gets for Gilby Woodwork. So. Okay, bit of repair work needed in there, but apart from that, um, there's another one done.